I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Happy mid-December. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah Sameh. What, around the fifth, sixth day? And we're going to make latkes tonight. Yeah, we're making latkes finally. Uh, earlier today, well, it's Hanukkah, but uh, April was just wearing her sexy Santa outfit, which is also known as an apron, which shows a lot of nice side boob and sexy back skin. That's a gift from my friend, a really good friend of mine that occasionally listens to our podcast Aww. when she's not busy momming. It's a good gift. But she was like, I just... It was like five years ago. She's like, I just can picture you in this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's come in handy. That we've done a I couple actually wear it, it all year round because it's the only apron I own. You know, if that, and you're like, there's some white schmutz on there. I'm like, that's because I bake cookies in that thing. Yeah, it's an apron. It's, <laughs> it's not jizz. It's, it's not. actually cookie dough. <laughs> or a little column A, a little column B. Ooh. Well, and about that, so the reason why she was in this, and if you're one of those people who actually listens just to our entertainment. intros. It's just yes. for Amy's entertainment. It's, for, it's just for me. Uh, but if you're one of those people that actually pays attention to our intros, you get inside information, whereas people who fast forward don't, because guess what? We have a campaign going on Instagram starting today for a full week where we're giving away a ton of sex toys. Like tons of sex toys. Like we the, like really are. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of sex toys. Yeah. And all you have to do is go on our Instagram, Shameless Sex Podcast. You'll see a photo of April in a sexy Santa outfit with some toys. It'll have a little prompt. Just do that. You get entered into the contest to win some toys. My magic wand has a Santa hat on it. Yeah. Because it's gently used. Oh. Actually, it's been used a lot. <laughs> Just saying. It's the plug-in version, by the way. Maybe you need to win a new one. So you can. I mean, I don't actually want a new plug-in one. I have my rechargeable version of the Magic Wand. That is my go-to. Yeah. However, the plug-in one is just... It's kind of amazing. And they it's last from forever. the 70s. I got it at Pure Pleasure when I yeah. was there. Yeah, if you all want to learn more about the Magic Wand, you can go to purepleasureshop.com. Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX in... Uh, not in all caps. You can just actually write it because we figured that out. You get 15% off and you can use the creme de la creme of Vibrators. It's very powerful. And if you're not following us on Instagram, Do it. go ahead Do and it. check us out. We have some great content, some original content. Amy and I are even doing reels. Do you know what reels are? If you don't, go check them out. Ooh. Are those like videos? It's like... TikTok. Oh, but, but for Instagram? For Instagram. Creative. Um, okay, so <laughs> we have a sex question as usual about porn and partner watching porn and how it might be affecting orgasms. We will read a bio and we'll dive into cock mastery. What does it mean to have a conscious cock? Did you know uh, an update for you, a news flash? News. That MasterCard and Visa pulled out of being able to, um, like on Pornhub, you can't use MasterCard or Visa anymore. Because they're anti-sex? I don't know. I, I, I don't have the total 411. However, I do know that they did. So now I think they also took down content that's not original on Pornhub. So you, if you want to support, which we've talked about before, Art, yeah, artists, artists, mm-hmm. and uh, you, you, there's definitely a lot of great producers and people out there directing films. We've had some on our show, but I'm just saying, go ahead, spend a little money and support your... That has ethical porn has happened so many times as as a, my mom and I used to own the retail store, Pure Pleasure, brick and mortar. Now it's just all online. But we so many rounds like w- every year there was something like some bank or or it wasn't Visa or Mastercard ever, but some, or PayPal. You know, someone was like, "We don't support sex toys anymore," and it was just so obnoxious. It's really hard because they put you in the same category as um, like guns, and porn, peddling. And, yeah, but we were sex positive sex shop. So, but that's yeah, that's interesting. People in there. I wonder. I'm assuming it's personal beliefs i don't know 
Okay, before we do sex question, shout out to our favorite lubricant brand, Uber Lube. We can't talk about it enough. We can't use it enough. And actually, we're giving away Uber Lube in the contest on Instagram. The best lube ever, in our opinion, is a silicone lubricant that never gets sticky. It's long lasting. It feels amazing, luxurious even. You actually want it on your body. At least I do. I can't get enough of it. Uh, a lot of other lubes are like, get this off of me. And this one actually uh, feels like it's hydrating the skin. April even likes to put it a little in her mouth for oral. I do. It uh, just helps everything go in smoother yep. and it glosses your teeth, but doesn't stay on them too yep. long. So it makes it, it doesn't have a taste. You can actually swap. Steven, the founder, he actually has done a whole shot of Uber Lube <laughs> to prove it that won't kill you. it <laughs> won't kill you. And yeah. it has no actual bad taste or no taste. No taste. Yeah. So it's, it's really digestible. Great. I don't know the nutritional We don't recommend facts. taking a no. shot of it, but putting a little in your mouth or putting your mouth on some bits that has it. You don't get a mouthful of nasty lube. It's very clean ingredients, very body friendly. They have over 3,000 doctors on board recommending it to their uh, clients and patients, etc. So if you want to try some of the best lube ever, I feel like everyone should have lube at their home. Go to uberlube.com. If you use coupon code SHAMELESSX, you get 10% off and free shipping. I'm pretty sure you won't regret it. Uh, changed my life and April's as well. Hopefully yours too. Are you ready for a sex question, Chip? I am. I feel like I'm always out of Uber Lube though. Oh, really? You need more? Always. Well, we're... I was like, why are I always have the empty bottles? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I just <laughs> use it too much. I have some under my bed. I'll give you a bottle. I need okay. to. Sorry, sex um, question time. Okay. Um, we do the news sound again. News. <laughs> Should we do that for North, a sex question East, now? West, South. That's what news stands for. She knows all the fun facts. <laughs> it's an acronym, Amy. I like it. For North, East, West, South. Perfect. You're so <laughs> She's good at this. She's, if you ever want a trivia partner, April, you should be partners with her. She do, knows all the things. Do you ever do a word of the day? No. I do. My word of the day today is dubious. What does dubious mean? It's, you you got to look it up. It's a dubious. <laughs> be a du- it's actually not a good thing to be dubious. <laughs> but I just like to say dubious in a dubious way. I feel like there's a lot of words I used to know what they meant, and now I don't. Because I'm old. No. Stop practicing. It's just stop practicing. It's just it's somewhere in my brain. I just need to. We'll get you going on animal group names. Can you just send me your word of the day so I can practice yeah, the same one? Yeah, dubious is your word of the day now. And then we have to use it three times okay. to each other that day. I already said it like four, and I didn't even use it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Sex question. I've been in a monogamous relationship for 11 months and our sex life has been amazing. My partner and I do not live together and we see each other every other week and I know that he watches a lot of porn. I'm super open about porn and masturbation and it hasn't bothered me until recently as I've noticed he has been had trouble getting off when we are together. He also admitted to having three orgasms in one day through masturbation, which is awesome, but most likely through porn, whereas it's becoming challenging with me. It's making me think maybe I'm less desirable or brings up body insecurities by comparing myself with porn bodies. I know I need to have a conversation with him and I don't want to shame him or make him feel judged, but I'm concerned that it's having a negative impact on our sex life. Early on, we had no trouble with any of this. And as the honeymoon period wears off, I'm noticing these big changes. What do you all think? Mm. Porn. I love and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> porn, a great uh, entertainer, can spice things up, get the motors going. Uh, not the best sex educator, although we've had some great folks on here, directors, uh, porn folks that uh, have educational porn as well that is available. But anyways, that's not what they're asking. Um, this is common because, mm-hmm. okay, porn is designed for shock value. It's intense, right? You very rarely see porn. It's very slow and soft and mellow because it doesn't get the dopamine going. And so porn can, is usually created to, with more intensity in terms of the, the movements, the scenes, the images. Um, and it's such a quick dopamine rush. Like dopamines are natural drugs that your brain produces when we get excited. And, um, so at any rate, brains can get used to that. So if you're watching a ton and ton of porn, your brain can get really used to this easy access to that dopamine rush into getting aroused, excited, to having the orgasm, and then it can show up in your sex life, whether it's masturbation with yourself or pleasuring with other people, where all of a sudden it becomes difficult to have an orgasm. Now, is this related to the porn stars are hotter than my partner? Not usually. And I and I, I can't see everyone's different. So maybe that's the case for some people. But usually it's just your brain getting so set on this thing that was really quick and easy to get off. And it has nothing to do with your partner or that they were hotter than your partner. Um, so for the person, this, this uh, person, I think uh, they use she, her pronouns. And um, I want to say that I understand it's totally normal to feel like it's bringing up these this idea that you're less desirable or it's your body insecurities. 
And it's most likely not that. It's most likely that your partner is watching a lot of porn. And I don't want to say too much, but if it is starting to show up and and affect other aspects of sexuality and you are having issue with it and or they are, um, it might be too much. And it's just that this is the quick dopamine fix and that they're getting really used to. Um, So that's one thing is to just take some of that pressure off of yourself and your brain might still say that it's me, it's insecurities and that's natural to do, but just to know just, just really likely isn't that. Um, and that's your conversation with your partner. You start with, start with the positive. April calls us the shit sandwich. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you. I, I love that you have all these orgasms and you know, I love that you, you know, that you like watching porn and you like to self pleasure and, um, et cetera. And, I'm noticing that um, some things have shifted in our sex life, and I don't know if it's related to that. But um, you know, I heard the other day you said you had three orgasms uh, from self pleasure, and sometimes with us, or often with us, it's hard for you to have an orgasm. And I'm getting some insecurities about that, and not saying that that's on you, right? Because my insecurities are mine, and I also would love to explore more orgasms in our partnership. And I'm wondering um, if what you think, you know, do you think your porn consumption is showing up here and affecting that? Does that bother you? Um, and also just to speak from, take ownership of your experience. Like I, you know, it, maybe not say it bothers me, but like it's bringing up some stuff here and I really desire to feel your orgasm with me. Um, are you interested in exploring that? It can be a little less scary than you're watching too much porn and you're causing problems in here, which I don't think this person would say. But. Right. I I completely think that's some great advice. And I wanted to share something that came up for me because I have a personal experience with watching a lot of porn. And I do feel like when I made a commitment to stop watching porn for a little bit and wanting to use my imagination, it was actually really great because I was imagining my partner a lot of times and that would come into my actual physical experiences with him. So it was awesome because then when I was getting turned on by him, it was like I had been masturbating to him instead of porn, Mm. which was really helpful. So maybe if you could invite your partner for one week to take a break, because it said every other week, the week that you're off, you could say, hey, what about taking a porn break? I'll take one too, or a a different break and masturbating with your imagination and see what that looks like. I I invite you or challenge or it's a game or whatever you want to say, because once your body, as you were talking about the dopamine is being released from, from watching something, which sometimes you do want like a fast yeah. or orgasm. So you're looking at this thing and you're fast forwarding to the part where you're getting really turned the on. The deep anal scene. Yeah. So instead <laughs> you could just either, he could use a, a toy or his, you know, rosy palm, whatever that looks like, <laughs> uh, but use the imagination and tap into the things that really get him charged up and excited. And then he can share that with you to be like, yo, what was your turnout? What did you think about? Was it, and, and, and look, it's open for interpretation here. So whether it's you or, or not, but like what kinds of things, was it this office scene? Was Mm. it a shoplifting scene where the, you're bad. And then I take you in the back and put you on the desk and start banging you out (laughs) because you did something bad. Or was it really sensual? And it was, so I don't know. And and that ebbs and flows as we've said before. So it could be one thing one week and then you guys tap into your your sex life the week that you're on and then you have some interesting slash exciting stories to share i like that it's like an experiment hey let's try this thing see what happens and i like when people propose it as a we thing so not just you have the problem you go fix it it's hey let's do this together even if i'm not the one consuming a bunch of porn what's one thing i can do differently right now too here's your assignment here's mine and let's and we we're proposing proposing this from not that we're broken it's that we're good or we're okay but we want to be great yeah. And, and, and that's a better selling point than like, we have a problem and or so you have a problem. It's also interesting what comes up in your brain when you're masturbating, like what you tap into. I've tapped into some weird shit where I was like, I don't even know about like, oh, my, in my head, I was like, my partner cheated. And I was like, it was, but it was hot in my head about him cheating and from masturbating. I was like, now you're, you're so bad that I'm going to fuck it out of you. Mm-hmm. So it was like that. I like that. And you know, it might be hard. <laughs> that's sexy. Um, I like, April was really into this, your bad thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fuck 
suck it out. I of don't you. know why. No, I'm in, Just I'm today. In, I'm kind of into it too. Yeah, you are. I like being a naughty girl. Um, and being, anyways, um, <laughs> not about me. But what I what I wanted to say is, it might be hard if your partner has gotten used to the porn. The assignment might be really frustrating at first. They might still have str- a struggle having orgasms on their own or with you. And to know that that's also normal, air quotes with normal, um, that it just might take time. Just like if I got hooked on my vibrator and I thought that was the only way I could get off, I have to reprogram my brain to remember or repattern itself to know that I can get off in these other ways. And it take, can take times. It could take weeks. If you, know, you never know. And what about also one at- last piece that I think could be helpful what about watching some sort of a movie that isn't necessarily uh porn at all but that has some sexy scene that gets it tingling your bits tingling Mm. right so mine was fatal attraction i was or sex in the city some scenes from sex in the city so Mm. what about watching a movie together a vintage movie if you will that nine and a half weeks nine and a half weeks have we talked about that i think we have once on the podcast yeah the hottest 80s movie way better than 50 shades of gray it was way better and uh, I encourage you to watch a vintage movie together that maybe you could share that it turns you on when you were 12 or 13 or 18 or whatever. Oh my God. Mine was and the rape scenes in Melrose Place. I don't remember that, but I'm going to have to. I mean, I don't Mine remember was the, the exact OC. ones. I'm just kidding. There was no Dawson's yeah. Creek with the passionate kissing. In the- no. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm judging you. It wasn't. <laughs> um, and then this is, might be perfect. We're, they were talking about cock mastery. What does it mean to have a conscious cock? And I think um, that the consciousness, right? A lot of times we can watch porn and not be in our conscious mind or we are in our present mind. We're just like drifting off into fantasy. So this podcast might have some good info too. Yeah. Are you ready for Christopher Lovestone's bio? What is, that's a great name. It is. Is really a great name, and I think it's his birth name, so Ooh. I even like it better. Christopher Lovestone is a sex educator and couples counselor who survived six divorces in his childhood and then went on to rewrite the rules of the relationship game so that people can actually win. He now teaches people how to succeed through communication, modern sex education, and innovative relationship strategies. His techniques have yielded him a wildly successful 15-year marriage that gets hotter every year, and he published his teachings in his new book, Conscious Cock, The Empowered Sexuality Manual for Men. He has been called the Einstein of relationships and is endorsed by many of the top sex educators in the world. To learn more or to buy his book, visit Conscious Cock, just like it sounds, C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-C-O-C-K dot com. But first... Stuck at home wishing you could take that relaxing holiday vacation with your partner? Rather than just daydream about getting away, bring it to your home for a sexy staycation. When it comes to gift sets for couples, we are all about the Naughty or Nice gift box from Like a Kitten. The Naughty or Nice gift box is beautifully yet discreetly packaged with all kinds of goodies, making it a great gift item for yourself or your lover. Spend your evenings licking delicious butter rum lube off of your partner, or dripping warm massage candles that turn right into a massage oil, or explore some sensual dominance and submission with the black satin binding ties and mini whip, and so much more. Make sure the kids are still at grandma's because this is one box you'll want to take your time with. And right now, Like a Kitten is offering our listeners 20% off and free shipping when you go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout. Just go to likeakitten.com slash shameless or use promo code shameless to get 20% off likeakitten.com slash shameless. And now it's interview time. All right, everyone, episode time here. We are with Christopher Lovestone. He is live. Well, not live when you're listening, but live. He is in Costa Rica, and uh, we can see behind him. It's so green and lush and beautiful, and the air looks so fresh. Uh, It looks like a nice gig. So you all can't see him right now, just so you know. We're painting the picture. Uh, And he is the author of Conscious Cock, and I just want to say that that way again, Conscious Cock. We always start with the same question, Christopher, for all of our listeners, even though they already heard a little bit about you in the bio. Uh, If you could elaborate a little more, tell us about yourself, how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality. Oh, man, I thought I was going to be a doctor. (laughs) You know, I thought I was going to be in primary care. You know, I worked for years shadowing different care providers, uh, mental health clinics, sexual health clinics, uh, and um, frontline caregivers, the ER, et cetera. I thought I was going into proper traditional allopathic medicine. But, you know, as I looked at the looming bills for med school and said, is this really for me? Third party 
um, billing, the whole like profiteering in the industry. I said, no, this isn't for me. What is for me? I don't know. I didn't know. And I just had so many layers of shame to peel off of it. Um, but my wife and I, we bought a sailboat and we sailed away from the United States in search of our future. We went cruising for a couple of years. And in that, I started peeling away these layers and finding out that, yeah, I really have this gift at communication, education, anatomy and physiology and teaching. And I really had a lot to say about relationships and sex education for men. So I just started writing my thesis while I was sailing, you know, and then just so much started pouring out of me. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is a curriculum. You know, I went to school to become a teacher and then I went to school to become a doctor, uh, well, pre-med and basically health science, but combine health science and education. What do you have? You got sex education. Mm -hmm. So um, there's so many years in my adolescence and childhood when I was growing up in just this traumatic household with one failed relationship after another, just like all the dysfunction, all the battles, all the lawsuits, just broken relationships left and right. And, and I just grew up in this environment, one after another, just war zone after war zone after war zone. And I just, I said, I just, part of myself said, there's got to be a better way. This is fucked. These rules are rigged. The game isn't working. No one can succeed. I didn't have a single positive role model. So it kind of all came together, literally while I was sailing up into the sunset to find my future um, in my thesis. And that is how to shift the rules of the game. Just literally change the rules, rewrite them because they're screwed. Like it just leads to failure. The only people that win are the people who cheat by these rules. And I'm like, let's just scratch all that and start over. So then I heard this poem by this poet, Alana Louise May called Conscious Cock is Medicine. And I went, bing, <laughs> that's gonna be the container, the vehicle for, for all this curriculum, all this content, all these lessons, all these tools that I have to teach. Because um, there's so many women that are my friends that are in like the goddess circles and stuff like that. They're, they're doing their own priestesshood and uh, self-empowerment work. And they're just saying, where are all the empowered men? Like I get it all the time. Like where are all the empowered men? And, and well, guys are kind of in a hard place. 60, 70 years of feminism has emasculated them. They're taught they don't want to be part of the patriarchy. So they're kind of been, their power has been diminished into being nice guys. But then the women are like, where's your power? I want your sexual power. I can't feel you. Where are you? So this concept of like, she wants your cock, but don't do it unconsciously. Mm. Like, don't be playing out the patterns you saw grandpa do or your uncle or your brother. Like, like put the... Uh, laser insight of your mind to it and like choose a different way. So that's what I mean by conscious cock. I'm not all woo woo about, Oh, consciousness meditating. That's not what I mean. I'm not talking spirituality. I'm just meaning don't play out subconscious patterns that were programmed into you that you don't even know about. Like use the light of your awareness and shine it on these rules, bust them apart and rewrite them into something that actually gives you a chance for success. So this is just what works for me in my life, but it works. And um, people kind of need examples of things that do work, relationships that are successful so that they can be like, oh yeah, I like that. I'm going to copy that behavior, et cetera. So I'm just writing what works for me and like giving it to the world. So that's interesting because when I think conscious cock, I, did, I didn't really understand, I guess, what that could mean. I, I understand what it is to be conscious from my own, in terms of my own beliefs and what consciousness has been for me. But when I think of being conscious in a body part, that's a whole nother concept. And so I, I'm just curious, what does it mean to have a conscious cock? You kind of tapped into what it, do, what, what it doesn't entail, right? What does it mean to have a conscious cock? And can you kind of dive deeper into why this is not the norm as well? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, God, there's so many layers that I could go into here. But um, let's just say that there is a, a complete lack of good, accurate, modern sex education for men in our world today. So their cock is not educated. It's very, what do they get? You know, some education from porn, but I wouldn't call that education. I would call that like programming instead. Like the, men are supposed to be this way. It's like, this is how you please a woman, that kind of thing. So, you know, part of having a conscious cock is getting accurate intelligence and information. There's so much that's come out in the last 20 years from female researchers that aren't in the mainstream medical journals and the sex ed books in high schools. But so you got to go to the source. So I kind of like help get that out there, et cetera. So some modern sex education and some 
good relationship strategies, communication tools, protocols that actually work to help you be open and share what's going on inside of you with the other person so you can actually make decisions based on real information, you know, rather than two people wearing masks and like never getting anything right. So like if you combine accurate modern sex ed with like communication tools and authenticity tools that really work, you have a chance at having a conscious cock, right? Otherwise you're just like, you're playing these games and these roles and these patterns that you've seen and taken in from other people. And you're, where are you in all of that? You know, as a man, where am I in all of that? Am I just doing what my, I saw my brother do because that's what I think a man does? Or do I find my authentic desire, what really turns me on and the ability to communicate that to my partner and then show up in bed powerfully from a place of real authenticity and desire combined? Oh my God, it's so yummy. <laughs> so it is it's this kind of waking up aspect to, rather than just doing the like jackrabbit. Mm. you know, or the dog, oh, the you know, pounding away, <laughs> you know, like that. No, 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 no. Let's just move that off the table entirely. There's different ways to do it. Mm. So a lot of it is sex education about pleasure, which almost doesn't exist in the world today. Definitely not in junior high, high school or college. Mm. There's no talk of pleasure. It's just STI prevention and pregnancy prevention. But hello, what about pleasure? <laughs> I mean, mm. what about like the sharing and the emotional bonding that can occur. Nobody talks about that in sex ed. So I try to fuse that in like a one-on-one level curriculum mm. for guys and give it to a 13 year old, give it to a 20 year old or a 50 year old who cares. Just like give them the freaking information. They need it. They don't, you know, you, do you know our bodies ourselves? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mom had that when I was a kid, I read every freaking page of it two or three times. And I went looking for a book like that for men and I couldn't find one. Mm-hmm. It didn't exist. I'm like, okay, so let me make one. Let me make it short and to the point and succinct. Because guys, they just kind of want like sound bites. You know, give me a quick matrix download fast. You know, so that's what I do. <laughs> well, like the life hacks and like, yeah, just tell yeah, me. Exactly. Tell me what I need to do. Cliff's so notes yeah. where you can just page through and figure out all the juicy stuff <laughs> yeah. really quickly. Yeah. So you can you be, just to elaborate, can you be a conscious human or penis owner and not have a conscious cock? Like, can you consider yourself to be conscious? In, in general, as as like brain, your brain is is aware and you're self aware, you like and a, your yeah. cock is just isn't cooperating because it's a different level of consciousness. I've never thought of that before. Thanks for asking that question. Let me simmer for a moment. <laughs> you know, there's plenty of people who are extremely in touch with themselves, very emotionally intelligent, very educated very literate, very progressive, maybe even philosophical and spiritual, but who are very disconnected from their sexuality. Mm -hmm. Tons and tons and tons and tons of people because of so much shame in the world. So yes, I absolutely think it's possible to be conscious in your life, but still have armor, guarding, shame, lockdown on your genitals and your pleasure centers. I do. Yeah. Yeah, So creating situations, Mm -hmm. pardon me, let me just finish this one. So creating situations where we can, we can um, lightheartedly create spaces to talk about these things that allows people the the first crack opening the door to maybe say, Oh, it's okay for me to talk about this stuff. You guys know you're doing it with your podcast. Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off. Oh no, I was just gonna say I agree. I totally agree with that. I've met folks, like penis owners, who are in the you know, the tantra world, and they're like, "I'm so conscious in the tantra world." And then there's perspectives on sexuality are still kind of outdated. I'm like, "What?" Uh, you know, even so, even that, like, even people who are in the more conscious sexuality worlds, and when we speak, and like I like how you said earlier, it doesn't have to be spiritual, right? For some of our listeners, we say tantra, they're like, "La la la," with too mm-hmm. much woo. So let's just speak to people who, and I think that's a brilliant question april who have done some of the work to be more have more awareness to be more open-minded to ask more inquisitive questions within themselves about their programming yet sexuality in itself is it's kind of it's not its own work it's connected to everything but can be this other whole other realm that can be uh, its own other realm of work and even within that you can think that you are you know, oh, I, I took all the classes, I figured it all out. And yet you still maybe only saw what you wanted to see. And you didn't w- do the deeper work with someone who is you know, an educator or a therapist or a guide or, uh, or the workshops or all those things too. And even when you do those things, you still could be have your limited, limiting perspective. And I just believe that we always, the work can be infinite, mm-hmm. right? You know, it, it's not just like, all right, I took the workshop once and I figured it out because we are changing all the time. Society is changing all the time. And who wants to stay the same all the time anyways? Why not keep doing the evolution an evolutionary piece there 
Um, so yeah, I love everything that you're saying. And so what I'm, what I'm getting from it is it's beyond the cock. It's beyond the body part. It's mind, body, spirit, and it's, it's the body and as well as how we work with it and our, the emotional self and all that stuff. And I imagine presence is a huge part of it. Probably. Oh my God. You could say attunement, mm. right? If you can't tune into where your partner is. And if you can't tune into what's going on inside of you, if you're just playing some script, you know, if you, then you're, there's no hope for success, right? You're just going to be missing each other in the night. But if you can tune into where your partner is or partners are, and if you can tune into what you're actually feeling inside rather than what, what's happening for you in your movie, then you have a chance at like real transcendent connection or exquisite um, um, connection. Maybe not transcendence, but um, yeah. I, I was just talking to uh, someone, a client actually, about this uh, and to see what your thoughts are on this. So um, you know, someone who's in a relationship with someone else where, um, where she's done the work around, not the work, sorry, she started the work around um, be- becoming more of a conscious being, meaning more having more awareness about why she ticks the way she ticks, why she believes what she right. believes. And, uh, and it's one of those things where she's like, you know, once you start this work, there's no looking back. Who wants to go back to putting your head in the sand and not being in tune and aware? It doesn't make it easier. It was a lot easier when I had my head in the sand. I was like, la, la, la. And so this path is actually harder, but there's more richness and depth. And but yet sometimes those people still find themselves in relationships with people who are further back in the work. And, they, and so I was saying to her was, you, you can never go back, right? And you might go back for a little bit, but you'll be unhappy because you'll, you'll be like, uh, I know the path is having more depth and with depth, depth becomes more challenge as well, yet also becomes more magic. And, and, and but, so, but yeah, sometimes those people will go into a partnership with someone who uh, has yet to do that work and they're still kind of in the like, la, 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 like, why would we do that? I'm fine right here. I'm not feeling my feelings and sharing my feelings and my wants and my desires and my needs. And, um, and which is, I don't want to shame those people either. But what we were saying is that once you, you can get a little taste of it and maybe go back to la, la, land, which is you know, more denial or not wanting to do that, that work. But once you get a full mouthful of it, it's like, Oh, that's what a bit, what's available. A full mouthful of a conscious cock. A conscious cock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so would you agree chocolate. with that? And though it's like once you kind of open that up, it's it's just it's like you're you're on the path. Yeah, you know, there's this experience that I've had in my life that I, I'll have a new realization, or you could say an awakening, but I don't want to have a spiritual connotation to it. You can make a new realization, and then that redefines everything. The playing field suddenly has sh- changed. The ground underneath your feet has shifted. And then if you continue to lean in, if I continue to lean in, inevitably, there's another door that opens. It leads to a whole other new world, a new level, a new land. So it does keep going not falling down the rabbit hole, but it seems like rising to ever new levels, mm-hmm. right? So it's a challenge if you're interested in pursuing that journey and your partner isn't. Mm-hmm. How do you kind of hook their interest? Can you hook their interest? What do they want? Where's the mismatch? How do you zoom in on that with your microscope and actually address it so your heart isn't breaking because you're having the most expansive educational experience in your life and like you're redefining your concept of yourself and your place in the world and your sexuality and your energy and then your partner is just like oh, i'm fine on the couch like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you deal with that it's an interesting question oh my god so, you go, yeah you, you go crazy or you you just kind of brush it under the rug or you grow resentful or maybe you leave the relationship or you stick around but or it's, you cheat or oh you, yeah oh yeah you yeah. cheat yeah. and you, you get just, out of your integrity and do things to fulfill yourself with yeah. people that you feel fulfilled with or by momentarily and it, it, it is it's a it, that's a black hole of what can can happen and i think a lot of people that do tap into the conscious realm it is hard to look back even with friendships too right when you're opening up your mm-hmm. consciousness hanging out with people that don't want to have those deep conversations or what, I mean, even when I speak to my mother on the phone right now as, as a more conscious human, I'm just like, I'm fucking bored. This topical stuff, these topical <laughs> conversations are more exhausting. Weather. Than deep. Yeah. yeah. Health. Yeah. Right. Or, or go- gossip. <laughs> or talking, talking, on my foot. I'm like, <laughs> or like talking shit about the neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the bunion. Oh, the oh, bunion, bunion talk. I, I'd <laughs> rather hear about your bunion than talking shit about the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bring it back to the conscious. Oh my god! So, what about um? So, for we're talking specifically to most so for penis owners who are 
fans, admirers of Volvo owners. What are some of the ways they can learn to be better partners and lovers? Do you, our listeners love tips. So do you have any um, ideas of, or concepts or tips that you could share? Of course, you have a whole book on it. but that you I have- got tons of tips. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I know. I love um, tools that I can communicate within like a minute or two, and it makes a big passive or massive, not passive, massive change for somebody really fast and they can remember it and go home and tell their friend without needing to take notes, like mm. high impact items. So there's tons of things. And, you know, I work pretty much exclusively with heterosexual people. You know, maybe they're bisexual, but they're in heterosexual relationships. This kind of like dominant paradigm, traditional relationship structure. That's what I'm trying to heal right there. Um, so one of the things that I, I'm finding the most traction, the most effectiveness Um, at is teaching men about menstruation, Mm -hmm. teaching men about the reproductive cycle, teaching men about the hormonal uh, levels that shift over the four cycles or the four weeks of the cycle, et cetera, getting them to be in tune with what's happening for her rather than fucking oblivious Mm -hmm. and then blindsided when she has maybe a mood shift or something like that, or is like passionate about something that he doesn't know why she's suddenly passionate about that. Like instead of being blindsided and confused, let's shift that entirely Mm -hmm. to a partnership where you can be allies, right? So the, the tip, like one of the tips here is guys get a period tracking app on your phone. Mm -hmm. If you're in a relationship with a woman, I'm making one. I've, done programming since I was 12. I'm making a period tracking app for men in relationship with a woman to teach them sex ed about her cycle. Like just put in the day she starts bleeding. That's all you got to do, son. You know, and like, then you'll get your blips. <laughs> you know, you get to like, oh, really? I should be thinking about this this week. Oh, okay. Or maybe like enter some notes about how has she been this week? What's her mood been like? How's her receptivity been? How's her sexual libido been? You know, and like get him kind of involved in this investigatory perspective on his woman that maybe she's a mystery that he could learn rather than that bewilders her. So you get a period tracking app. It's going to help so much. Um, Maybe you're going to discover that there are a few days every single month when she's really hot, really horny. That's a really good time to plan a date. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let me just say, maybe you're going to find that there's a day or two every month where she just does not want to get out of bed and you could bring her a hot water bottle and some tea and put on a movie and sit and watch it with her, maybe massage her feet. Plan, don't plan a vacation for that time. You know, like work with her. And as you like shift into this concept of being a health ally, it shifts the terrain under your feet where your relationship can start being a partnership. And then when, when she feels his support on that level, like she feels that re- he really gets her, like then more layers of armor start coming off. Then you start building more trust. And isn't that the pathway to, to riches is building more trust in a relationship block by block by block. There's no shortcuts. Mm. So get a period tracking app and start using it. <laughs> like, I love that, that piece there. Cause it, I, I thought it was just how uh, isolating it can be to be like, you know, in your hormonal process and not even just that as a, I mean, cause I think penis owners have their own version of it too, as opposed to someone being like, you know, you're not in this alone. I'm here with you. I'm your partner. And so I, I want to support you. I love talking about menstruation with Me especially straight men. I'm like, why is it gross? And I'll, I'll say something like that. Uh, why, why is it gross? When, if I'm, if I say something yeah. like, oh, I need to go get tampons or, oh, I'm sorry, I'm PMSing right now a little bit. And people are like, oh, and I was like, what is that? A, are you shaming me I just for like getting just, my period? I just Wait. like to say I'm bleeding. I'm just straight up bleeding. Right yeah. <laughs> like, does that freak you out? I said bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I'm bleeding out of my pussy. Yeah, right. that's where it's coming right. out of. <laughs> we got to we gotta switch this. We got to reframe it. Like if somebody loves you, don't they love you to your bones? Like isn't your body and your blood sacred? Like, if you love someone, I mean, come on, what's more sacred than their blood? So, like, reframing, it's not dirty, it's not messy, it's not repulsive. Fuck no, get those traditional beliefs out of your goddamn head already. Mm -hmm. Like, if you love this person, they're a human being. If they were lying, bleeding in the street from an accident, you would run to their aid and help them. You know, why not help with our everyday health, too? 
This podcast was made possible by Satisfier. These days, life can feel a bit repetitive. No matter how much we appreciate our partners, having the same type of sex day in and day out can start to feel boring. But good news, Satisfier just released new app-enabled pleasure products that allow you to spice things up. With their vibes, you can take control or give someone else control. And whether you're playing solo, with someone in the same room, or with someone on the other side of the world, these vibes will have you coming in no time. I'm in love, love, love with the Curvy 2 Plus. It stimulates the clitoris with air pulse technology and intense vibration without overstimulating me. Hello, multiple orgasms. And when flipped, it seamlessly offers intense G-spot stimulation. It's like two products in one. And right now, Satisfier is offering our lucky listeners 40% off and free shipping for all app-enabled devices when you go to satisfier.com and enter code SHAMELESS40 at checkout. Again, if you're looking for one of our favorite new devices, go to S-A-T-I-S-F-Y-E-R.com and use code SHAMELESS40 for 40% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by OMGS.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years, and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone, so whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore, so go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's O-M-G-S dot com slash shameless to get $5 off your O-M-G-S access. Again, O-M-G-S dot com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. You have any more tips? Because I want some more. I love it. <laughs> I want some more. I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you're willing to, but that's a good one. I like the period tracker. I just think it's great to hear your perspective because I think this is, this is, gem worthy information. These are jewels. These are precious gemstones that we're hearing. So if you have another mm-hmm. one, I, I know you, you can get all of these tips in the book, but there's, it has to be another juicy one. <laughs> okay. You mentioned, you mentioned my book. My book's name is Conscious Cock, the Empowered Sexuality Manual for Men. And um, there's a, a worksheet in there called the Yes, No, Maybe worksheet. And it's just a, a list of sexual activities like anal sex or a threesome or romantic activities like showering together or having a bath with rose petals and candles, you know, whatever. There's just a list of different romantic and sexual activities. And then there's three columns. Yes column, no column, and maybe column. And if you fill one out, ask yourself, do I want to try this activity at all in my life? Is this on my sexual bucket list or not? And just put a check in the yes column if it is. And just be honest, not whether you should feel that way or not, but just really tune into yourself. Are you really interested in that or not? If you're not interested, check no. If maybe you're interested, but you'd have to have a conversation or some needs met, then check in the maybe column. If you do that, and then you have your partner fill out the the sheet separately from you, not looking over her shoulder, you know, and you both answer honestly, Maybe if you like wine, you have a glass of wine and then you look at them together and you say, are there any things that we're both a yes to? This is really helpful if you're trying to spice up your relationship. There's a a dominant paradigm, traditional relationship pattern between men and women that is so nauseatingly pervasive that we all know it. Such a cliche that as the hotness wears off over the course of a few years or a decade or something like that, he still wants more sex and she's lost a lot of interest and there's a disconnect that forms and a divide and he's not getting his needs met and she's obviously not getting her needs met because she's not open to him. So one of the ways that you can address that issue is by conversation and some new tools like having a worksheet (laughs) and maybe being lighthearted and playful and saying a little preface, nice frame of reference to put around it. Like, honey, I'd like to continue to have some spice and some heat in our relationship. I don't want that to die you know, and I don't know what to do, but I'd like to try something with you. Would you be willing to try this exercise with me? It's just a worksheet and you just put it on the table. And if she wants to do it, great. And if she doesn't, okay, fine. There's tons of other tools you can try. Um, Lots of them, but like a little homework and then a fun conversation. Be like, I never knew you wanted to do that thing. Well, we never had the conversation. All it takes is a worksheet, you know? 
I love that because right now, especially when we're recording this podcast, we're in these these stressful relationship stress stressors are higher, I think, than they ever have been. We talked about that before we started recording. People are either stuck at home or there's work stress or there's just been huge global shifts in how we were living our lives every day, even if you, if you did work remotely before or you haven't. And one of the questions that Amy and I always get on a regular basis from our listeners who write in is, how can I spice up my relationship. I am now with my partner more than I ever have been. And it's challenging. And then the kids, if they have kids, the kids are home all the time. Like how and what the fuck am I supposed to do in these to- times of lockdown and COVID stressors? So I love the the worksheet tip because you could print that out. As, as you said, fill it out separately, have a sexy date night kind of thing where you're exploring those ideas together, what interests you. And we have a whole list on our site as well. Yeah, if you sign up on different things. our newsletter, I think you get like 60 tips or just like little creative ideas. Yeah. Some of them don't really have anything to do with sex. It's like set up your kitchen, like some, some theme like night, like night, in night, Paris. Yeah, night in Italy and learn five Italian words and order. If you don't want to make the Italian food, order some takeout and, and say whatever, what's some good Italian words that you, you know. Prego, grazie. Yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> manja, manja. Yeah, think- <laughs> manja, manja. Manja, yeah. manja. Manja. Yeah, let's talk about manjaing. <laughs> what is pussy give you in an, Italian? Is that what that is? No, manja is eat. <laughs> oh, but I was eating like, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. It's, so there are really great ideas that we've come up with, and I would love to hear a little bit more. If you want to share maybe yep. a thing or two that folks out there can listen to to help spice up their maybe COVID lockdown times. Okay, I've got one that has come out of COVID. Uh, from my relationship and from me living in my home with my wife and my family. Um, It has birthed organically from our sex life. And now I'm packaging it to give it to the world because it's a really useful tool. We're calling it the O team, air quotes. Okay. (laughs) Now to to get into the O team, to make it onto the O team, to become a member of the O team, you have to complete the O team challenge, which is a seven day challenge. Let me give you back up. I'll give you a little preface. So, Honey, I'm going to talk to you like you're my partner. Honey, like lockdown is hard. I'm feeling like this, this desperation and separation in between us. Like, like we don't have lots of sexy, yummy time. The kids are home all the time. Like we're around each other nonstop. We're in a pressure cooker, et cetera. And I just feel like all these pressures on us. And like, I don't want our flame to die. Like, and I want to be able to connect to you, but I know it's hard, right? But I want to find some way to connect to you in the middle of all the chaos and all the pressure. I still need to feed that fire in us a little bit every day. So I've got an idea. Let me tell you my idea. Okay. Now, now that's done with my preface. Okay. You know, you're women. (laughs) You've used lots of vibrators, I assume. Oh yeah. Probably test driven tons (laughs) of them. As I understand it from all my women friends that I've asked, when they try a vibrator out, they turn it on and they put it down there and they touch themselves. They don't like take themselves out to dinner first or dress up. They just like turn it on and they start touching themselves. Okay. So what if your partner was to offer you a gift every single day of getting your clit on their tongue for just as long as it took you to have a nice little orgasm, like a human vibrator as a gift? No, oh, we have to have sex. We have to have intercourse. You have to be in thigh highs and look all pretty. No, like build up, no requirements on it. Literally a pure, simple, easy, lighthearted, gift of pleasure and connection. Mm. So the, the seven day O team challenge is to have oral sex every day for seven days mm. where the man, cause I deal in heterosexual relationships gives a free gift, a true gift, no strings attached of loving pleasure, hopefully to orgasm, just of going down on her five minutes. That's all. Maybe it's before you really wake up in the morning, or maybe it's at, and when you're in bed and you're falling asleep, honey, can I just like kiss and lick you for a few minutes? And you can just pass out. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Like just give the gift of love and connection. And uh, so to actually do that for seven days straight is kind of hard. <laughs> it's a challenge because like all the things that are going on in our heads, all the worries on our shoulders and stuff like that, it's a, hard, it's a challenge. But if you can do it, there's this like gift of love that starts kind of like virally infecting your relationship, even though it's under pressure. 
And I was talking to a friend about it as we're developing this into a, a course offering that I'm going to be giving to the world. And she's like, you know, it's like the synthesis of all five different love languages into one physical act. And I said, oh my God, you're so right. It's all the reassurance, you know, it's, it's the gift, it's service, it's, it's everything all into one. So if I could say for people to consider something that's lighthearted and fun and different, it's to consider maybe in your relationship trying on a little challenge where it's just like five minutes. It's not an hour. There's no huge requirement. Just a little touch every single day, lighthearted, just like think yourself a loving, throbbing, beating heart vibrator. Mm. For your for your partner. That's so sweet. I love that. And it doesn't. So it sounds like the goal. If there's a goal, I'm doing air quotes. Is to give a gift of pleasure without having expectations to receive anything. And orgasm right. is a bonus. If the orgasm happens in that, that's great. And if not, then all good too. It's about really just showing up in that that giving phase there. Detaching from the need for orgasm is extremely healthy pursuit. Just the gift of connection, presence presence, true presence and pleasure, not on autopilot going crazy, but like connecting to her body's movements, reading her subtle language, enjoying the smell and the texture, like really being present with each other. So there's a lot to, to like to describing how to do it. If a guy doesn't know how to do it, to really be pleasant, present and good at oral sex, for example, but like still just the, the invitation to having a seed of connection every single day that doesn't have a huge requirement and like lots of luggage baggage mm-hmm. att- attached to it you know that is a beautiful thing that's healthy for a relationship yeah i agree with that i'm i'm really i like skill skill's great but what as someone who identifies more of as an energetic when it comes to sex like i could see a hot naked body in it in itself doesn't usually isn't always enough for me to be like yeah it's more the energy behind the the human um and so there's something about that that the more the presence and the energy and someone's just, that's just like i just love pleasuring you you don't need to do anything yeah. here you can just relax is yeah. is way way more of a turn on than like oh i took all the sex classes i'm really good at this let me give you an orgasm right now i'm like good luck to you good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs> maybe whereas other people are a little different like maybe but that's just that's just speaking to, to myself so you've shared a lot about your your book here conscious Cock, um, maybe you just give us a little rundown on what people can expect. Is it a, a workbook, or how does it how does it work? What, what would they what would they experience upon reading it? You know, I break it down into simple sections. And first off, like I've got to address our mindset, our perspectives, like the enculturated programming that we pretty much all have just in this North American culture. Like we have to shift some of our beliefs. Um, so first is just like mind hacking. Let's shift some perspectives on things. Um, let me give you some new ways of looking at things. Switch this word from this meaning to that meaning. And then now we can start actually having a conversation. So first we just like some perspective stuff. And then understanding women guys don't fucking understand women they don't get the how they work they're just confused and buffalo they have no idea which end is up and they're always playing catch up and they're always missing the mark you know so there's a lot to understanding how she works how she inhabits her body how she feels etc stuff like that about her monthly cycle and about her body literal anatomy and physiology so then we go into um, sex education from anatomy and physiology phys- physiology standpoint literally the map of the clitoris that we now understand that we didn't understand 20 years ago, for example. Do they know about how to touch the cervix? Do they know about the AFE or the A-spot? A like, do they know any of these other erectile tissue zones in the female genitalia? No, they don't. All they know is this little spot, if they're lucky. That's it. And some guys don't even know about that little spot. Like, there are, we are still in the dark ages for a lot of, a lot of subcultures in sex ed. Um, so then after I've taught Oh, then, then I teach communication tools. You've got to have some protocols for bringing up the things that are inside you. You have to have a roadmap to having hard conversations and, um, you know, mining what's real for you rather than doing what you should do or what everybody expects you to do so that you can actually have a real honest conversation. So you have to have these communication tools. So if, you ha- if, you under- if you've changed your mindset, you understand women, you've got communication tools in modern sex ed, then I go into sex technique at the very end. Because all the guys want to know, how do I last longer in bed? That's like 99% of the questions I get. How do I last longer in bed? No, I'm serious, I'm serious. And it's actually a beautiful question. I don't, I don't want to make fun of it because it's actually a beautiful question because at the heart of it, to me, he wants to be more pleasing to his partner. And that is beautiful. 
so if, if, if we just pull back a layer or two, um, you know, there's a true desire to be pleasing to his partner, to last as long as she wants him to last. Like that, that is a beautiful thing. So then I'm like, okay, you want to learn that, but yeah, I got to teach you all this stuff first, right? Then when you learn that 10% at the end there, it's on a firm foundation of actually connecting, actually tuning in, actually understanding, and actually being able to have a dialogue and stand up for yourself. Because a lot of guys are doormats. They just let themselves get walked all over. And then their partner's like, where are you? I can't feel you. And maybe they push harder to try to find him. And he's like, ah, you know, and it's just a recipe for for disaster. So not being a doormat and not being a macho jerk in that sweet spot of like having sex ed communication tools, understanding women and like being able to communicate your desires and listen and hear a no, like that's the real sweet spot there. Mm -hmm. So I get into all that. It's real simple, real bite-sized pieces of information, like a quick, every chapter is a quick read. And then at the end, there's worksheets to help you write things out because you got to do some homework. Otherwise, it's just like you know, reading something and it never takes. It never gets traction. You know, the, the kind of like sh- shelf help. <laughs> you know, just put the book on your shelf and it never changes anything in your life. You know, <laughs> instead of self-help where you actually do some work. So there's some worksheets in there and, and um, you know, it really helps people to make massive change quickly in like bite-sized pieces. It sounds like it has all of the elements of helping folks, no matter what level of consciously living uh, in, inside of their bodies and inside of their cocks, per se. Uh, it sounds right. like it can really be just the Bible for folks that are in perhaps more heterosexual folks, but for folks that are not only curious about how to be a pleaser to their partners and show up, but it's more of a holistic approach. You talked about the foundational aspect and building the brick by brick, the foundation of what you need to be the best partner that you can possibly be. And in terms of sexuality, yes, but there's also all of these other pieces that go along with that. So that's great to have a one, sh- a one stop shop, a, a biblical approach to your relationship, if you will. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> hey, is it the world Jesus? needs it. Yeah. God, the world needs it. You know, there is a, a type of person or man that the book doesn't work for. And that's the guy who thinks he knows everything. Oh, uh, that guy. No, and I'm just saying that that guy looks at my book. He's like, I know all this already. And I'm like, you're the guy that needs to fucking learn what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> you need, you're the one that needs to read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People, but I do get that. You know, yeah. there is this concept that arrogance has no place mm-hmm. if you're going to do this work. Mm-hmm. You no know, curiosity. Replace arrogance with curiosity. You know, that's the solution. So where can folks find you? As, and, and we know in Costa Rica. However, Costa Rica, yeah. if they want to work with you and also how can they find your book, buy your book and get in touch with you if they, ha- if they want to do some things with Christopher? Well, thank you for asking. Um, you know, I'm censored. So if you go to Amazon and you search me, you're not going to find me. Okay. Um, why? Because I have some anatomical charts and diagrams. I, pff, beats me. There's no pornography in my book. It's just a textbook. But whatever, I'm censored. So the best way to find me is to just go to consciouscock.com. And from there, there's links to get the book and, and get tons of downloads, free downloads, worksheets, uh, audio recordings of workshops that I've done, stuff like that. I just tons of teaching materials on there that make big impacts quickly. So just go to consciouscock.com. And then from there, you can link out to anywhere. The internet, things like YouTube and Amazon, they 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 are they hate on some sex. Yeah, some they do. Sex, oh, no, Peddlers, sorry, yeah. they hate on and on sex positivity because there's yes. some, there's some dark stuff on there that and maybe dark's the wrong word, but is not. Uh, well, we've been shadow banned three times. Yeah, on Instagram, Instagram. or Instagram things yeah. where where and we're the ones that talk saying, but then like the twerking yep. booties are okay on there. Um, like okay, all right, whatever. <sighs> it's so that's why we have jobs, though. We're here to. Do. Also, it's probably great to buy the book directly from you that's that's what ultimately will support eliminating you eliminating the middleman yeah. yeah so or the middle human let's say or the middle <laughs> the middle jeff bezos, oh, oh, bezos. Sorry, jeff bezos. well i want to say thank you for enlightening us on your incredible work that you've been doing and obviously the research is there and there's success stories that you're you're living proof of the successes of the work that you've been doing and we just really uh, I, I won't speak for amy sometimes i do but she can speak for me I thank agree with you. Her usually. Just thank you. And I think our <laughs> listeners will resonate with this. And we uh, we can all learn from this book. Even as a vulva owner, you can still take some nuggets of great information. So now is the time. You know, I, I just want to say something. We're in the holiday season and 
a lot of people are probably going to buy the book and then give it to their partner. And I just want to say that's kind of a minefield. So proceed carefully. Mm-hmm. Like giving a guy a self-help book about sexuality could be a disaster in your relationship. So let me just name that and say that doing it tactfully and gently and carefully is a, a good way to proceed, mm-hmm. prudent way to proceed, loving and careful. So like getting the book and prefacing it that like I heard there's a really fun exercise in this book that I'd like to do with you. So I got it. Would you check it out with me? You know, and kind of like inviting teamwork and collaboration rather than you're not good enough kind of perception or leaving it on the back of the toilet. Like I got this cool book and I wanted to read about this exercise and just kind of leaving it laying around. And then when he sits down, maybe he doesn't scroll Facebook for 10 minutes while he's sitting there. He reads the book and (laughs) learns about the A spot. Hallelujah. That's (laughs) a good idea. But he also might not. The bathroom books are very, because I'm sorry, my partner spends 20 to 30 minutes and I'm like, exactly going in there for another yeah. business but i'm like wow and it's okay <laughs> if you're masturbating but i know he's not I'm like you just it cannot take you that long to do your business in there but whatever not right. shaming, quiet time. i'm not shaming but i'm like the book would be perfect in the toilet i in well, the loo i also like the idea yeah. though of, of okay not just hey here's this conscious kind of work about how you can be a better lover and what will work for me also like hey right. let's but I'm going to buy a book also about how I can be a better lover. Do you want to research that together to see what would work for oh, you? Yes. You might be interested. Or here's an idea of another book that I bought that's all about how to please your, your loving penis, how to be a better lover as a vulva owner, et cetera. Um, yep. So it could be this, this communal experience where we share. And it's not that anyone's broken. We're not pointing the finger as we're speaking needs. And also like and, uh, one of the examples I give with, with people uh, is – don't don't talk about it as if it's a problem or we're we're at, we're we're in a terrible place to say you know, we're good or we're okay. I want to be great and I want to be great with you and I'm willing to do my work too. What what are you wanting more of? And let's explore together. You know, I, I failed to mention that part of what the book covers is also male sexual anatomy. A lot of guys have just never had a really solid course on male anatomy and male pleasure points. Mm. They just don't know. They don't know about the frenulum and it can make you come on a vibrator. Guys don't know that they can come on a vibrator. They think vibrators are for women. Hello, hallelujah. Guy, vibrators can be for men too, but you got to know the right spot. And guys don't know that because they've never taken the time to like enjoy pleasure. They're always just doing a 60 second thank you, you know, and then they're off. Anyway, so thank you so much for for giving us this space to talk about this because it's so important to get this out to the world. Thank you, Christopher. And go ahead. I challenge all of you. I invite you. Yes. Go check out Conscious Cock. And at the same time, you can check out some Conscious Wine because (laughs) we love Margins Wine because it is grown consciously and with love. Women owned and operated, the grapes come from unrepresented regions and unrepresented varietals. You don't know what varietal is? Well, experience it. Go to marginswine.com. Sign up for the newsletter. And if you buy three or more bottles, we've got some coupon codes and you can save some money, honey. And you can give the gift of wine if people are over 21. You got to be 21. We don't up. ship to Europe. Sorry. Then you can be 14, I think. But yeah. that's all good. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Europe. And I'm going to give you one more invitation, y'all. If you're a listener right now and you love us as much as we love you, go to iTunes. Go ahead. Give us five stars. We read every single review. It doesn't even have to be long. You can just say, awesome. I love you. Conscious cock. Woohoo. So we Woo. appreciate you and we love each and every one of you so much. We'll see you next Tuesday, y'all. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.